Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and upon the directives of His Majesty's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs and honorary president of Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation brief, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as the follow up of the president of brief, Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the races of His Majesty the King's Endurance Cup commenced, organized by the Royal Federation. The race will continue until the 20th of February in the International. Endurance Village. A 40-kilometer qualifying race was held, which witnessed a wide turnout. The most prominent of the races to be held are the 160 and 120 kilometers race for amateurs, the 120k race for the public, the 20k family race for children, the 100k race for the public, and two 40 and 80k preliminary races. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser commended the development of equestrian sports in the kingdom lauding the support of His Majesty the King. His Highness added that this season has witnessed a number of equestrian races and competitions which showcases the growth of this sport. He also praised the Cup of His Majesty the King, which is the biggest and most important race organized by Brief. For his part, Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah expressed pride on behalf of the Federation in organizing this championship. He also praised the continuous support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh al Saleh, presided over the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee meeting in which he affirmed that the consensus reached by the committee and the government regarding the general budget of 2021-22 to demonstrated the directives of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to maintain Bahraini citizens' gains despite the exceptional circumstances the global economy is experiencing. As Saleh asserted that the circumstances that result in the drop of global oil prices and the pandemic created many challenges globally, while Bahrain has offered stimulus packages and economic incentives that proved their success. For his part, the president of Khalid, the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee, Khalid Hussein al masqati stated that the consensus fulfills aspirations, noting that the proposed budget is different in circumstances, goals and planning method that was zero-based. The Minister of Justice and Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, lauded the issuance of the corrective justice law for children and their protection from ill treatment by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa after being endorsed by the Shura and Representatives Councils. He described the new law as a significant development in the juvenile correctional system, which aims to achieve corrective justice for children, provide care for them, and protect them from maltreatment. He added the law also puts children's interests as a top priority in all sentences, decisions and procedures related to them, regardless of the party that issues them. The minister stated that the law stipulates working out additional and alternative correctional measures that meet the children's needs for rehabilitation and reintegrate them in the community by creating a supportive environment for the children to care for them, adjust their behavior and reintegrate them in the community by enhancing shared responsibility with the family. The Minister of Justice expressed thanks and appreciation to the Shura and Representatives Councils for their big role in formulating the law. He also commended the efforts made by other relevant parties which contributed to the advanced standards contained in the law and the field of corrective justice for children and their protection from abuse. In line with the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister and First Deputy Supreme Commander Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Tamkeen made a statement in which it announced the gradual resumption of its support programs. The statement said that it will receive applications for its business development program as of February the 21st to enhance growth and sustainability. For his part, the Chairman of Tamkeen, Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, said that the funds programs are a part of its strategy to enhance the 
flexibility of its support and to improve the quality of services through digital, innovative and sustainable solutions. The chairman added that the improved programs are intended to offer incentives to develop productivity and improve the quality of services and support virtual commercial licenses and the wages of Bahraini employees. He said that Tamkeen is keen on following up on the results of the previous phase, supervising the present needs of the private sector and dealing with the challenges to Temkin's budget as a result of the effects of the pandemic. For his part, the Temkin CEO, Ibrahim Janahi, said that the new changes will focus on the efficiency and sustainability across all sectors and that supporting human resources is a part of Temkin's plans to continue to develop the skills of Bahraini labor. And to speak more about this, we are joined by Senior Manager of Customer Engagement and Partnership in Temkin, Mr. Ahmed Janahi. Hello, Mr. Ahmed. It's good to have you here with us today. Now, Mr. Ahmed, Temkin announced resuming its business development program. Tell us what that includes. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you uh, for this short interview, allowing us to shed some light on the relaunch of our program. Uh, as you have mentioned uh, uh, earlier, so based on the directive of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, uh, the current Prince uh, and Prime Minister, uh, we have announced the gradual comments of our flagship programs by reopening the application window uh, for the business development program. Uh, so uh, this new edition comes as part of Tenkin's ongoing efforts to support enterprises in the private sector and to develop the human capital. Uh, it's worth highlighting that. Uh, our team is looking into uh, uh, and taking into consideration the feedback uh, of the business community in our last uh, annual consultation forum, uh, which resulted in the uh, improvements that you will, inshallah, witness uh, in this program. Uh, the program as well addresses uh, the need to add more flexibility to the support uh, uh, that we're providing to the market, while also inc increasing the quality uh, and the performance of our services, uh, and to encourage uh, enterprises to adapt to a more digital and innovative solutions to achieve a further expansion and sustainability. You understand, and, and I think everybody understands, that today's market is, is facing tremendous challenges, mm -hmm. and we're trying to be part of the solution for that. Great. Mr. Ahmed, who is eligible for this program, and how can they be involved? So uh, the revamp program will, will focus on the effectiveness and sustainability across all sectors, uh, including micro-enterprises and SMEs, small and medium enterprises. Uh, furthermore, it will also include virtual CR, where the owners can benefit uh, from the allocated financial grants to support their wages. Um, enterprise will, enterprises will also be uh, able to apply for services from virtual CRs, which are now considered as part of the business development program, mm -hmm. given that they are considered uh, uh, as major service providers. Uh, this is one thing to keep in mind. Uh, Temkin is trying uh, continuously to improve its programs to make sure that we're adapting to the changes that are, that are happening in the market. And, and uh, through these offerings, we're trying to set the market that we do understand the dynamics of the markets that are changing. But again, we're here to be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Ahmed Janahi, for being with us. The National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus held a press conference today to discuss the latest developments of the coronavirus. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Walid El Mana, affirmed that the new COVID-19 strain spreads rapidly and requires caution and full commitment to precautionary measures, noting that based on the continuous tracking and analysis process, the number of active cases remains high, which requires joint responsibility to mitigate the spread and overcome this 
challenge. Dr. Almana stated that one of the reasons for the spread of the virus is direct contact and the higher percentage of the spread among contacts is through family gatherings and special occasions. He added that the increase in the number of recoveries is not an indication of the improvement of the situation as the total number of active cases is still increasing. Dr. Almana highlighted the introduction of new screening measures for travelers entering the kingdom, which includes an additional COVID-19 PCR test to be conducted on the fifth day after arrival, totaling three PCR tests for a reduced total fee of 36 Bahraini dinars. The infectious disease consultant and the microbiologist at the PDF hospital and member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19, Lieutenant Colonel Menaf al Gahtani, highlighted the importance of receiving the vaccination, which will ensure herd immunity. He emphasized that vaccinated individuals should continue to vigilantly follow all precautionary measures as vaccinations do not stop infections but limit their symptoms. The consultant of infections and internal diseases at Salmania Medical Complex, Dr. Jamila Salman, said that combating the virus requires serious commitment from citizens and residents. Dr. Salman further noted the importance of going out only when needed and avoiding gatherings to those living in the same household or social circle. And the national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 2044 had taken the vaccine yesterday, bringing the total number of vaccinated individuals to 252,990. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 7,539 with 628 recoveries, 771 registered new cases and three deaths. 292 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 474 are contact of active cases and five are travel related. The deceased were 79 and 73-year-old female citizens and a 49-year-old male expatriate. The Ministry expresses its heart felt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.